Okay, so Kent Hovind just released his six evidences for young earth creationism. And I'm really excited to check this out because I'm working on a video at the moment where I'm asking for creationists to give evidence for creationism, not just against evolution or against our current understanding of biology or genetic continental drift or anything like that. I want evidence for creationism. Ken Hoven has been in this game for a while. He's one of the most popular young earth creationists that has ever existed. So I'm imagining his evidence should be quite strong for creationism. So let's go. I think the very best evidence of what some people call a young earth is God said he did it in six days and nothing died until Adam sinned. And Jesus said that was the beginning of the creation. So the best evidence of a young earth is the Bible. The Bible, certainly the dates in Genesis 5 and Genesis 11. So his number one evidence is the Bible. And I want to leave this evidence for the last part of the video. And I want to check out all these other evidences first. The population of the earth today is growing. But if you do the math and go backwards in time, you can make everybody on the planet from eight people getting off of Noah's Ark 4,500 years ago. It's been here for millions of years. Why aren't there a whole lot more people? Population is a great indicator that man has not been here for millions of years. So that argument isn't actually an argument for creationism per se. It's an argument against population statistics and our current understanding of how long humans have been on this earth, which is about 300,000 years. So just to explain further, if evolution was proven to be completely false, that would not add any credence to creationism. Creationism doesn't just win by default. You need to give evidence for creationism. And how we build theories in science is we start with a hypothesis, then we test that hypothesis under certain conditions, and we then build novel testable predictions and run those predictions through peer-reviewed studies, placebo-controlled trials, double-blind experiments, and the more novel the prediction is, if we test it and it comes true, the higher likelihood that that is an accurate representation of our universe. You look at the genetic load that's increasing in the gene pool of people. You say, wow, this can't have been going on for a long time. Once again, he's using this argument, genetic load, to say this can't be happening for a long time. So that's an argument against evolution, not necessarily for creationism. You can look at the sun. The sun is burning up its fuel source. Obviously it's burning and it's shrinking because of it's burning up its fuel. And it is not only shrinking, it is throwing off 5 million tons a second. It's losing weight. Well, if your son's been losing weight for billions of years, if you get back in time in your imagination, the sun would be much heavier, making gravity stronger, sucking all the planets in. So once again, that's not an argument for creationism, that's an argument against billions of years. Well, you look at the moon. The moon's going around the earth, but the moon's getting further away from the earth. Okay, well, that means it used to be closer. So once again, this is arguments against an old earth. This isn't arguments for young earth creationism. And I thought this was six evidences of young earth creationism. Uh, I'm a bit confused. And so look at the earth itself. The earth is spinning, but it slows down. Many young earth creationists actually accept a flat earth model instead of uh, the model that we currently accept in science. So a lot of uh, young earth creationists would actually disagree with you here, Kent. But to me, the very best evidence that the Earth is 6,000 years old is exactly what God, who, he's the guy who did it. Uh, okay, so we haven't actually seen any evidence for creationism except for the Bible. Everything else is just an attempt to try and pull apart our current understanding of billions of years, evolution, biology, natural selection, tectonic plates, etc. It's not necessarily an argument for creationism. It's uh, just an argument against an old Earth. So the only arguments he actually gave for creationism was the Bible. So let's address his one piece of evidence for creationism, the Bible. Now, I'm confused why you chose the Bible uh, and not the Kesh Temple Hymn written in 2560 BC, or the Epic of Gilgamesh written 2150 BC, or the Rig Veda written between 1500 and 2100 BCE. These are much older texts than the Bible, and they talk about God and the creation account. Genesis was written in 600-500 BCE when Israel was in captivity by the Babylonians. Another thing is if we take the Bible literally, we run into all sorts of problems. So for example, Genesis also has a talking snake, which unless they change a lot physiologically, would be quite hard for a snake to do. Kent Hovind also produced a book called What on Earth is About to Happen for Heaven's Sake? a dissertation on end times according to the Holy Bible. Now I want to highlight the word there, about. See, if we take a literal interpretation of the Bible as Kent Hovind does, we can do some pretty interesting maths that kind of show the silliness of the whole endeavor. So Genesis 22:17 says that Abraham's descendants will outnumber the stars in the sky. If we take a poetic license for this verse, which you could with all the six day creation account, you would get to just the stars that you could see in the sky. But let's take a literal interpretation as Kent Hovind 
uh, is taking with other parts of the Bible. In the universe, we have approximately 200 billion trillion stars. Our current rate of growth, although it is slowing, is 81 million people per year. So before the end can come, Abraham's descendants must outnumber the stars in the sky. Because that's what God promised Abraham if you take a literal interpretation to the Bible. And based on our current population growth rates, we would need to wait 2 quadrillion, 469 trillion, 135 billion, 800 million years before the end will come. Now, I haven't read Kent Hovind's books, but I believe that he's probably playing fast and loose with the term about to happen. The other problem with Kent Hovind's argument is the Bible has been disproven, at least from a scientific perspective. You can check my video here for some of the history and contradictions that we find in the Bible. However, none of this is a problem if you don't subscribe to the Bible as a literal, perfect text. And many creationists don't do that. So if you are a creationist and you do want to marry up the scientific evidence we have for the universe with your faith, some links are in the description as always. Thanks for checking out the video guys and I'll see you next time.